getting ready to work on my vision board. My best friend and I are doing a vision board for 2019, guys. And this week, this weekend rather, is when I will start. I am so excited to do this. Very excited. guys welcome back to the channel if this is your first time visiting i want to say welcome welcome to lydia's life after 50 tv it is saturday guys it's about 8 30 in the morning i'm up early got a lot of things going today guys um today i am going to be um working on my vision board as you guys saw in the introduction guys i'm so excited about this me and my girlfriend decided to do a vision board we just want to plan out our 2019 or things that we want to see happen for us in the future so this is me preparing to get that started today guys uh, also today I will be uploading two videos this is one and then I'm gonna be uploading a video for my travel channel which is journey with me 19 if you have not subscribed to that channel please go over right now and subscribe and jump back over here <laughs> but this video is today this today is Saturday and that video probably won't go up until Sunday. Let me just correct myself because with editing and everything, guys, yeah. The Journey With Me travel video will not probably go up until tomorrow. Um, that that video channel I started just a few months ago because I had a lot of travel stuff on this channel. So I decided I wanted to kind of separate it a little bit. But I still want you to follow me there. <laughs> oh, I'm just in a good mood today, guys. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue on with my process of my journey to Africa. Uh, you guys know that I am planning a trip to Africa near the end of 2019, early to 2020, guys. And everything that I do to try to get my information together on what I need to do in order to go to, to Africa. But it also is going to have other travel vlogs and things like that over there. So it's just going to be a travel channel in general. So I have a few trips plan this year in between trying to get there so you guys will see that over there and I probably will still put some on this channel just so that I can get people to know to go there but today I'm going to be working on that I'm actually going to leave here shortly I got to go to the mall I'm going to go spend my birthday gift cards you know I got a lot of gift cards for my birthday guys and so I'm going to go spend that do a little shopping and come back I got to wash my hair today guys today is going to be a lock care day it's really been cold the last couple days so my hair is real dry so I want to get really put some moisture in here and just get it washed but this video is going to be a continuance of um, the series I started about menopause and today we're going to be talking about symptoms of menopause a lot of women are in a menopause and don't know it because they don't know all the array of symptoms that you can have while being in menopause so I'm gonna sit down with you guys and just go over some things that I've experienced with menopause and research that I've done and talking to my doctor as well as other people about symptoms because you're going to be surprised on some of the symptoms that you do have when you're in menopause and a lot of times we're wondering ladies is something wrong with me what's wrong with my body am I sick and you're just in menopause guys and I'm going to tell you about it so if you're interested in this video keep listening and I'm going to actually uh, get me some breakfast and coffee and put this on a tripod. I'm going to sit down and have a conversation about it. Um, actually, not in that order. I'm going to run down. I have a, a Zumba class that I'm going to take that someone is giving in the building trying to get people to go. So I'm going to run down real quick and do that. So they're doing the first class for free. And if you like it, then you'll you know be able to come and pay. I think it's going to be like $8.00. Something like that. I think a session or whatever. But anyway, so after all of that, but it'll be like two minutes for you guys. I'll come back and we'll have a conversation. Just let y'all see my little outfit that I'm wearing. I got this sports bra from Victoria's Secrets. Really cute, really cheap. And yeah, guys, this is chapter 57, guys. <laughs> all right, see you shortly. Hey, you guys, welcome back. And as I stated, I was going to come back, guys, and do this video about symptoms of menopause i hope these videos are being helpful i'm getting a lot of really positive feedback so i want to keep this going i think it is very important that women understand what's going on in their bodies and a lot of times 
you don't know these things. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. When I was growing up, I never knew the changes that my body would go through because my mom didn't talk about it. I'm not sure about yours or, you know, this is not something that I was learning in school, but it is very helpful to have this information so that when your body begins to act out, you're not thinking you about to die. Because <laughs> oftentimes the symptoms can be so harsh that you really don't understand and you really think that you're very ill or that you know something is just you know really bad about to happen so I think this is helpful information and I know although there's a lot of women out there that has experienced it share your information ladies it's important that we actually help each other out and I always welcome additional comments put them in the comment section below if you have experienced something different because I'm gonna tell you ladies these are I'm only gonna give you 10 but ladies there are so many so many different things that happen to women that I have never experienced that you will never experience so everybody's situations is different some people say they haven't had this problem or that problem but you know at some point you know we kind of intermingle and cross over to different symptoms and so sometimes they're mild sometimes they're very harsh but it's just important to be aware so I'm gonna be looking down because I Got the information on my phone here. Gonna be using my little readers, y'all know. Life after 50. <laughs> I know some of you probably said, no, nah, that's life before 50. But anyway, uh, also, y'all know what time it is. Gotta have my coffee. My coffee and chill with my girls. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all, a lot, a lot of people, I've had people comment to me about me drinking coffee. Let me tell y'all something. I understand that Coffee may not be the, one of the healthiest things for you, but I'm gonna tell you ladies that if all you drink, if the only bad thing that you're drinking on a regular is coffee, then you're good. Because you know why guys, I only drink one cup of coffee a day. This is it. I've only had a few, few times where I was kind of stressed out and I might've done more than one coffee or maybe I didn't go to sleep the night before and I had like two cup, cups of coffee within a day. For, but for the most part, one cup is all I have. I do not drink any sodas, no carbonated drinks whatsoever. I have not had uh, a soda in probably 10 years. No carbonated drinks whatsoever. Um, I like to drink 100% juice. When I say that it's not preserved or it don't, it's not like 5% juice. If I have juice, I, I drink something like real cranberry juice, uh, real fresh squeezed orange juice or grapefruit juice. Um, I don't, pomegranate juice, I, I love that as well, but I don't drink any sodas now. Only thing else that I might drink that could be a real bad thing is tea. But now I'm doing a more healthier tea. I do the green teas. And my daughter who is partially vegan, her, her daughter is 100% vegan since she's been born, turned me on to pure cane sugar. So I don't use regular sugar, the cane sugar, uh, the 100% cane sugar, organic, has no GMOs, no sodium, no fat. So it's, you know, I try to put a healthier sugar in my coffee. And I usually only have like two teaspoons. I don't do no more than that. So coffee break. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to jump into the video. And... Hope you all are having a nice Saturday. It looks a little cloudy. I have not gone to shopping yet. I've gotten my, my class out the way downstairs in our gym, and that's so convenient. I'm so glad that they're doing that. We have a personal trainer in the building. And all of this is really have to do with health. You know, to be honest, yeah. I'm trying to be better, more fit at 57. And even though I do have a workout routine, I fall off a lot. I'll go from working out consistently for like six, seven months and then I'll fall off and may not work out, maybe just walk, you know, for like two or three months. So I want to be find a, a something that's consistent that I can not get bored with and I can continue to do so that I can, you know, maintain my health. So I'm just blessed that when I went and had my, my uh, biometric screening and this first of the year, I tried to do it at the beginning of the year that everything was normal, everything was healthy. Thank God for that. But I want to maintain that, so that's why it's important. But anyway, let me quit rambling and get on to the video. The topic, rather. Okay, 
symptoms of menopause. And I'm going to give you guys 10. And the first one they have here is irregular periods. You know, at some point during your, uh, your you know, process of going through menopause, perimenopause, you're going to experience irregular periods. And by irregular periods, they may be very heavy to very light. You could have, you know, a lot of us, and I'm, I just, I'm going to go from my experience. When I first started approaching it, I would have a really, really heavy period for like five days. When I say heavy, I mean heavy, guys. The first two days, I needed to stay at home because I could go through everything. It didn't matter. I would have double pads and a tampon when I was still using tampons. Uh, I would have to, you know, pad my, my pants in the back. I pad my bed. I was very, very heavy. So sometimes you can go from being very heavy or you could be a very light person where you have hardly nothing at all and you think something's wrong with you because it's nothing at all. You could go from being a person that had uh, two to three days worth of a cycle to a person that has five to seven or eight days straight of, of a cycle. And tell, I'm going to tell you, I was on that the worst end of that. I was the person that had the long period and I hated it, guys. It was miserable. So that's something to look out for. Or it could be another thing of irregular periods could be that it's not consistent. Where you have a monthly cycle, you may not have a cycle for two or three months or six months. And then you'll come back and then you may have a cycle and it'd be two weeks long. Or, you know, it's it was crazy. So if you haven't things that sim that's similar to that, that's an uh, indication that you might want to check yourself or go to your doctor and find out what's going on. Number two. If I can keep my phone from, from going off my phone. Okay, number two is heavy night sweats. Okay, that's when you wake up in the middle of the night, ladies, feeling sweaty and uncomfortable. Um, they say that the estrogens are triggered, the estro estrogen levels are triggered that uh, bring on these sudden sweats. Or hot flashes. News flash girlfriend, and this to my girlfriend Cheryl, my best friend, who said, I've never had a hot flash ever. Well, night sweats have been associated with hot flashes. It's just that you're having them at night, you're asleep, so you don't know you're having it, and you're sweating because you're having a hot flash. Some of us are sufferers during the day where we feel this explosion that goes on with inside of our bodies. And some of us have them at night. And you wake up and you're heavily sweated. You could be drenched through all of your clothing, your night clothing, your sheets, everything. I think I only went through a small period of that. And that was shortly after I had my partial hysterectomy where I woke up for maybe a month or so. Different nights where I was actually having night sweats. So I was having those hot flashes at night and sweating pretty heavily. So if you're waking up at night, you're really wet and sweaty, even when it's cold, that's an indication and you might want to, you know, go see your physician. Okay, let's keep moving because I don't want to make this too long. The next one, number three, is moodiness. Oh my gosh. I dealt with this, guys. You may or may not. As I stated, everybody don't experience all things, but I did go through a period of moodiness where I would, I would be, I would wake up and I would be in a great mood, and then I would go and I would bottom out, and I would be so sad, and I would be teary eyed, and I would cry at commercials for no reason, or someone could scream loud and I'd cry, and I, you know, I would be angry over something simple or a mistake. I didn't understand what was going on with me, guys. I was just moody all the time. And I just, and it was a period of months. And I can't even explain to you when it started and when it stopped. But I knew something was off because I'm not typically a moody person. And I knew that something was going on with me because I wasn't able to control that. And that has a lot to do with your estrogen levels. So look out for that as well. I'm going to move right along to number four. Exhaustion. It's the changes in the body. The body goes through these changes having a draining effect on your energy level. When I say exhausted, I mean, guys, where you're just tired, you may not even had any, you know, heavy, busy day. You just feel exhausted and you just drained and tired and you don't understand why. And they said that the uh, heavy night sweats could be associated with the exhaustion. 
you know, because it's, it's causing your body to be dehydrated. A lot of things are going on. So that's why it's important when you go through menopause is to stay as hydrated as possible. I keep water with me at all times. I have water on my desk at work. When I get to work, I, I have a 32 uh, gallon, not 32 gallon, quart size uh, container that I keep. And I drink that up. I try to drink that up in the first half of the day. And I try to drink another one in the second half. I do it most of the time, not all the time, but I do it most of the time. When I'm driving in my car, I usually keep a bottle of water in my little cup holder. You know, I try to keep water with me all the time because it's very important that you stay hydrated when you're through, going through menopause because you can um, be get dehydrated very, very quickly. And that is a whole nother problem within itself. The next one is loss of hair. Oh my gosh, guys. Some of you may experience this and some of you may not. And the only thing I think was my saving grace is because I've never had thick hair, but I had a lot of hair. So when my hair started to thin out up top here, I didn't understand because I knew I had fine hair, but it was thinning out and it was shedding. I mean, hair was all in my sink, in my bathtub, on my carpet. And I'm thinking, I got a pretty good, you know, hair routine, you know, regimen. I'm washing my hair. I'm keeping it conditioned. I'm keeping it hydrated. But that is a part of it, you know, um, losing the hair. And let me, um, let me read what they have here. Even though hair thinning and loss causes no phys physical discomfort, many women will find it amongst the most disturbing effects of menopause. And that was one of mine. The estrogen hormone is important for hair growth. When levels fall during menopause, hair begins to thin and fall out. So that's another thing to look for. It all has to do with the hormones, guys. Okay, number six, feeling dizzy. Now, this was one that I was very fearful of. It happened to me a couple of times, and I thought I had a real bad illness, guys. I was thinking something was wrong with me because I didn't understand why I was dizzy. I would stand up and I would just get you know, really dizzy or I could raise up out of my bed or be sitting in the car and I was afraid that if I'm driving, what if I have an accident because I'm dizzy? It says during menopause, a woman might experience dizzy spells and feel unsteady while walking. The severity of the symptoms uh, varies widely. Some women feel as though the room is spinning. That happened when I was laying on the bed while others merely experience feeling lightheaded. In most cases, the distance should only last a short time. Although the after effects such as nausea and headaches may cause for a little longer. In extreme cases, dizziness may lead to a fall. So if you're experiencing dizziness, dizziness, now it may be something else. So don't just say, oh, I'm going through menopause. If you have it and it's on a like a regular basis for a few days or a week or whatever, you want to get it checked out to checked out to make sure that's what it is and that it's not the symptom of something else. Because all of these symptoms could be symptoms from other things. So you want to make sure you know why you're having it. But like they said, it usually lasts only for a short time. I think I only went through that for maybe a month or two or something like that. It wasn't a long, long period of time. So, yeah. Yeah, ladies. Okay. <laughs> Number seven, putting on weight. Oh, my gosh. This is kind of goes back to my last video. Around here is where I weighed. As y'all guys can see, I'm not a, a big woman at all. Have very little legs. You know, um, this area here is where I gained my weight. But like they said, the menopause itself does not cause you to gain weight. It's the estrogen levels and it causes it to distribute your weight differently. So all of my weight kind of goes right around here in the middle <laughs> and back here, guys. So, yeah. Because I don't eat a lot. So I was like, I don't eat a lot. So why am I putting on weight? But this is something that's a big concern. That's why exercise is important. Drinking your water is important, guys, when you go through menopause. All right. Let's keep moving. And you guys can look up all of these individuals and get more information on ways that you can work with that. I'm just giving you some ideas. Annoying allergies. Who, Lord Jesus. Yes. The body's hormones balance affects its immune system. When menopause alters the hormone balance, existing allergies become acuter and completely new allergies may appear. Incidents of hay fever and asthma often increase at this time. In the majority of cases, the allergic reaction is on the mild side and the symptoms are easily treated. In few cases, the allergies may 
make life so uncomfortable, some may require medical treatment. For me, I became lactose intolerant. I can no longer drink 100% milk. Allergic to it, guys. Allergic to it. Allergic to it. <laughs> so, guys, I have to drink, you know, something that's uh, that's di di don't have dairy in it, guys. I'm st 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 stuttering because it is a mess. So, I chose to drink... Um, Almond milk. I love almond milk. I usually get the milk, vanilla almond milk, but um, almond milk in itself is good. My daughter told me about coconut milk. I'm not a fan of coconut milk, but I may try the vanilla version of it. But there are options out there if you become allergic and intolerant to dairy after menopause. Okay. Number eight, heartbeat becomes irregular. This was something that made me very, very scared. I remember laying in bed and my heart rate was skipping and doing all these different types of things and I was not exercising. I was at rest. Why is my heartbeat moving like I just ran a marathon? It made me afraid. So I did go to the doctor and they did tell me that that is something that happens. I have noticed no difference in it now. I don't feel it anymore, but this was like in the early stages of either perimenopause or menopause. I felt my heart being very irregular and I was afraid because you start thinking that you're going to have a heart attack. So look out for that. It says many women are alarmed when they experience a regular heartbeat or an elevated heart rate. However, menopause can often be the culprit for the changes in the heartbeat. This is one of the nervous system responses to the hormonal changes. So hormones, as I stated before, oh my goodness, guys, it's just like the devil when you go through menopause. <laughs> but it's it's really good to know these things so you'll know what you're thinking about, what you're, what you're dealing with. Okay, let me go back. Did I skip one? Because I don't forgot my places, guys. I don't know if I gave y'all 10 or not because it says that I'm on 10. Uh, lost slowly. Let's see. Now it was heart rate. Uh, make sure I didn't skip any. Let's go on to number 10. Forgetfulness, guys. Hang on a second, my phone is tripping right now. Forgetfulness, for, forgetfulness and lack of concentration. And I found that to be happen. I couldn't concentrate, guys. I was like, you know, I'll be trying to get things done and you know, it's just like your mind is just not on point. You're just like, okay, what's wrong with me? Or I was forgetting things. I was forgetting where I put my keys. And I know that happens just in regular life itself. But when it gets to a point where you just put them down and you forgot where you put them. And you're tearing your house up. And I promise you, you just came in and done it. Or you were, I would get halfway to work because I walked to work. And it's only two blocks away. So I get a block in and think, did I lock the door? I can't remember locking my door. So I would be afraid all day thinking that I might not have locked my door at my apartment and then I go home at lunch so that I could check it. <laughs> Even though most days I do come home for lunch, but if it was a day that I maybe was going to just sit on the in the plaza and have lunch on a beautiful sunny day, I would walk all the way home just so that I could make sure that my door, to, my front door to my apartment wasn't, you know, um, wasn't left unlocked. And it's just like a, just a, they call it a fog, you know, and and it happened for a while where it did frighten me. So I did ask about it and then it did continue. And it didn't continue long. It was just for a period of time. So those are just things that I experienced that you may or may not experience, but just to be aware if you start to have them. Another thing, which is not on here, and that was just the 10 that I wanted to add, but depression. I got very depressed for a spell of about two or three months. It was a lot going on in my life, but I'm a pretty tough person when it comes to dealing with issues that go on in my life and my family but I, I began becoming depressed and I was in a deep hole for a while guys so health exercising um, changing your diet you know finding out foods that will aggravate certain things or uh, foods that will help you like things that are good for your brain Cutting down on caffeine, which could be by way of coffee or either sodas like Coca-Cola. Um, increasing vitamins. Uh, I refuse to do um, 
the prescribed hormones. You, some of you ladies may want to do that. I believe in natural products. I believe uh, rather than going to prescription and laboratory stuff, everything that God gave us for healing of our bodies in the earth. And I believe in that. So I do a lot of things. That's why I gave you guys the uh, high flash relief by using essential oils. You can um, try flaxseed. There are a lot of different things out there, guys, that you can do to combat symptoms. Do your research, that's what I will say, before you just automatically go take some narcotic from a, from a uh, pharmaceutical company that experimented with something. You don't wanna have other things come up in your bodies because you didn't do your research and you might could have taken some herb or rubbed something on your body to relieve certain problems or get out there and start exercising and walking to make your health better. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. I, I do these videos because I just want you to be aware. I want my daughters to be aware when they start seeing signs of the menopause and know that it's a process. It's a natural process. It's just your reproductive system shutting down. You know, a lot of us are looking forward to it because we didn't have the children we want. We don't care about not having. And I, like I said before, the one of the best thing that's happened to me since then is my cycle being gone is something I don't have to worry about. I don't have to be out and about worried about whether or not I'm going to embarrass myself with a spot here and there. You know, so it doesn't make me feel less of a woman. I have children to know that I am a woman. I really didn't need children to know that I'm a woman. I knew I was a woman, but it's just the natural process of the body. So don't fear it. Just educate yourself and you will be better for it. Okay. So I hope that's helpful for you guys. Don't let my coffee get cold. so good and I will see you guys in the next video please make sure you jump over tomorrow to journey with me 19 and check out the travel video thank you so much for watching guys I love you all thank you once again to my new subscribers to my ride and die guys y'all mean the world to me and I will see you guys later on okay peace and love bye